welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host, Justin Baker, and I here to run down the top four teams in the Eastern Conference, uh, the Washington Capitals, the Philadelphia Flyers, the Boston Bruins, and your favorite neighborhood teams, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I don't know why they're your favorite neighborhood team, but they... They used to be one of my favorite teams. You know they're teams. like fifth in the league in attendance? Yeah. For average yeah. attendance? It's pretty solid. Who would have thought a team in Florida could work if you're actually decent? <laughs> Who would crazy. have thought it? It's crazy. Imagine if the Florida Panthers didn't suck. People might actually come to the games. Might. <laughs> They might. I mean, let's beat the heat. Let's go to a hockey game. Oh, beat. they're going to suck? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I don't actually want to go. I'll just go to the giant uh, outlet mall that's across the street. Or I'll go grab a seat at the, with the, the Florida Marlins because they've got 20,000 empty seats every game. So That's true, too. Uh, yeah, no, the outlet mall across the street from the Port, the Panthers Arena is like the biggest one in the U.S. Really? It's Never been. massive. I think it's... A uh, mile from one end to the other, or something like that. All right, uh, I've been to it a few times. It's uh, it's it's quite wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good place to buy things, you know, things that you definitely don't need. That's the best kind the of place. Best, the worst part, though, you know, I like to go and find some some other teams' apparel. Like, I'd snag a nice Florida Panthers jersey or something like that if I found it in an outlet mall for like fifty bucks or something. Heck yeah. Uh, there's like no stores like that there. <laughs> Even the sports stores don't sell Florida Panthers gear. <laughs> they have a lot of lightning gear. But yeah, even the one across the street, they, they don't really sell much, uh, which is which is sad. Um, if you're a Florida Panthers fan out there and you're listening right now, we would love to hear from you because like we, I just don't know. I would love to hear about your experience over the last decade as a That's Panthers true. fan. That's true. That's true. It's a sad decade, but... I'm a Leafs fan, so I understand pain. You do. I yeah. mean, you haven't. The Wings haven't had a lot of luck either. But you had, had a lot of success. You had a tremendous childhood. <laughs> your your childhood, teenage years, early twenties were glorious. Yeah, I remember going to the parade in 2008 when they won. I, the girl I was dating at the time was like, "Come on, we gotta go to the parade." Was, it, oh, like the night they won. So we went oh, to okay. downtown Plymouth, which is. A small, like a little da- dinky downtown area, uh, and people, you know, people got their blow horns and driving their cars through, honking and all this. And I remember it. I truly, I was like, "This is what hell is like." <laughs> Watching people celebrate the team that I hate winning the Stanley Cup. <laughs> it was, it was awful. Uh, but you know, it was fun to hate the Red Wings because they were so good. It's not a. It's like. How enjoyable is it to hate a team when they're at their lowest point? I mean, oh yeah. In some respects, I'm like, Heh. but it's no fun. Everyone's going to get down. there. Yeah, everybody's everyone is there eventually, and it just it's much more fun to hate a team when they're really good. I mean, that's oh, why absolutely. people hate the Patriots. Like, it's just fun to hate the Patriots, and and you know, obviously Tom Brady not there anymore, but uh, fun to hate them when when he was there. Uh, anywho. We've got some teams to break down. The top four teams in the Eastern Conference. We're going to start it out with Steve Eiserman's former team, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the team that uh, he basically assembled here and is is making what should be a long playoff run. It better be. On, on, on the old paper. Should be a long pay, playoff run. Uh, they, of course, they were the second-place team in the Atlantic Division, uh, they they kind of had a little bit slower of a start. They really they picked it up back half of the season of what was left of the back half of the season, and and really they I think they found their way. I think they also were like, what's the point in bursting out the gate like we did the year before? And Kucherov had twenty five goals before anybody else had ten, and uh, you know it's. They flew out of the gate. They didn't have the gas. Obviously, Columbus destroys them. They don't win a single playoff game. Uh, the team that win this, wins the Stanley Cup won less games than the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think that's I think that's true, right? It is true. Yeah. So, all the good that winning in the regular season does. Uh, but here's an opportunity to rewrite the story. And uh, with that said, you know, as as we've been doing with all these other teams, we've been going goaltender, defense, offense, and 
breaking down every little bit along with special teams. So we start off on the back end with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, Vasilevsky, right? He's coming off a um, Fesno-like season. He's, I mean, he's up there in terms of everybody's been already putting him in top three for Vesna voting already. Um, maybe I don't agree with that. I would maybe put him at four or five personally. But again, he's had a fantastic season. There's no, there's no denying it. Um, you know, he's in the last year of a three and a half million dollar deal, and next year his big contract kicks in. So he better, I mean, he better kick some butt now. Or else that contract's going to look really bad. I mean, look, he's he already looked down the road. And you can see Robrowski. He's not he's not getting a lot of uh, a lot of praise at his money, and neither is Carey Price at the money he's getting. Right, there. they're all pretty close. Exactly. Yeah, that nine and a half million dollars, especially when you have a team that's so tight up against the cap right now, and they've got a lot of D men who are going to need new contracts or are UFAs for that matter. It's going to be hard to you know continue the success. You know they have if they, you know, handing out deals like this at nine and a half million dollars, and um, you know, yeah, even though goaltending goalie that much, it's just that's, yeah. a, that's a big chunk. Especially the cap is not going to move. It is. It you know it's it's weird to me because while goaltending is my favorite position, it shouldn't be the highest paid position. Even though it's like the one position that can steal a game. You know, you can have a forward, and he probably will never steal a series for you. He might steal a game, but a goaltender can steal a series. Yeah. So, but yet I don't think they should be paid higher than any other player on the team. Which I, I mean, I guess he's not. No, Kucherov luckily. is paid nine and a half million as well. Uh, I they 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 obviously thought that he could get more. I mean, you know, everybody takes a takes a pay cut in Tampa Bay because of the you state know, taxes. Florida state tax and all that. So you're obviously this is basically hey, we're signing you to quote carry price money. But without the taxes, so help us, and we'll have a better team in front of you, and you'll look better as as we go on. He's also only twenty five years old. It's it's uh, easy to forget how young Vasilevsky actually is. Uh, but yeah, I mean this this team's gonna have no problem from a goaltending standpoint. And if something did happen to him, uh, Curtis McElhaney is not the worst goaltender to have. He is thirty seven years old, and this has been a long break. So we'll. Yeah, he looked good last year in the playoffs for Carolina when he came yeah. in for an injured Morazic. So, yeah. like, if something happens to Vasilevsky, I'm not worried. He's, he's a big guy. plays plays the angles very well, and uh, and also has some some like sneaky athleticism, uh, where he he ends up having some highlight saves as well. Uh, so goaltending wise, I think I mean Tampa Bay probably out of I mean, out of these four teams tops in the East despite the fact that all four of them have pretty darn good goaltender. Uh, Tampa Bay probably has the edge out of all four of these teams, in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. Boston with Tuka Rask, but I think that Tuka Rask... I would probably take Tuka Rask right now if I had to choose one. Yeah, I honestly yeah. would. I, but again, it's it's razor thin. Razor yeah, thin. Yeah, I mean, between the two guys... Now, Tuka Rask, he had a better season overall, uh, but I do... Vasilevsky, some, something about him tells me that he is going to make up for last year in the playoffs. Yeah, I think so. Tukarask has had plenty of opportunities in the playoffs, and he can't close. No coffee for him. Whoops. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. We know all about the goaltending. I really, to me, probably the biggest question for the Tampa Bay Lightning, if there is a question, is their defense. I know that's, that's kind of crazy to say. They've got Victor Hedman, who is arguably the best defenseman in the league, and uh, Ryan McDonough, who not too long ago we were talking about him being like a top 15 defenseman in the NHL, too. He still might be. He still might be. Uh, after that, though, it's it's a little... It gets a little dicey. You know, Mikhail Sergachev, very, usually on his game, very, very nice. He's so fast. Uh, offensively a good defenseman. And then, you, you know, we got to go Braden Colburn, Chattenkirk, uh, I mean, Luke Shen. I don't even know why, he, like, Luke Shen's not playing. I, I hope. <laughs> I hope, hope not. Tampa Bay that he's not playing. Eric Cernak. I guess their, the, their depth on defense is what you look at and say, oh, it's lacking a little bit. I know Hedman can play basically 30 minutes a game in the playoffs, so it's fine. Uh, but do you... Do you worry at all with their defense? I actually don't. No, okay. no. I I love what they have, the pieces they were able to add. Because 
I think they're wild cards. And when I mean wild cards, you look at two guys, Zach Bogosian and Kevin Shattenkirk, to me, are the biggest wild cards for this D because they have the ability to be quality defensemen. Obviously, we know Shattenkirk is a little bit more offensive-minded uh, than a guy like Bogosian, who is probably going to be your more, hopefully, defensive defenseman, a guy who can hit, who can still skate and move the puck, you know, okay. Um, but both these guys need new contracts, and that's where it's going to come down to because these guys are going to play like they want to earn their last big deal, right? A guy like Shattenkirk, obviously he's been floated around a couple times, you know, traded at the deadline from bought Washington. Out, yeah. yeah, bought out. He's a right-handed guy, so obviously there's still a big need for that in the NHL, and a lot of teams will pay a lot of money for that. And, you know, putting up 34 points this season isn't too shabby as no. for a defenseman. So you're going to find some teams that are going to be willing to bid if he shows up in the playoffs. And I think that's something he knows. Obviously, you've got guys like Pitcher Angelo and Tori Krug up at the top in terms of, you know, UFA defense. Well, but he's, and he's not getting a, he's getting like a two year deal. Probably maybe will be a three. I mean, you could see a really nice playoff where Kevin Shattenkirk would, would maybe get him that three, maybe a four year. But yeah, I, just given his previous history, signing a big deal and just totally crap in the bed. Right. No, absolutely. I, not. I, I don't know if more than a two year deal is on the table anyways, but yeah, he might raise his AAV. Right, and I think the same for Bogosian, too. I think he's in a position where he wants to try to earn, you know, maybe three, four million dollar contract, you know, AAV and maybe get two or three years. And so if he can go out and show that he can still be, you know, a nice complimentary, you know, number four, number five defenseman for a team still, because again, you know, he's a right handed defenseman and there's still a need for that on a lot of teams who like to have those righty lefties, you know, paired up. So, you know, he's a guy who's shown in the past in Buffalo that he can still play 20, 25 minutes if needed. Now he is getting up there, you know, he's hitting 30 next year. So does he still have it? The I don't speed, know. The speed may be in, in right. question a little bit. I mean, but he that, could that still just bring wasn't it. really his game, anyways. But, no. Uh, and then, I mean, of course, you've got Sergachev who's playing for uh, his. His first, long-term deal. His first real long-term deal, yeah, yeah at 22 years old. And, uh, again. and he's, 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 trying to, he's trying to prove that the trade, you know, throwing Druin out to Montreal for this guy was worth it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd say, I mean, he is a good defenseman. I don't, he, he shows these flashes of brilliance, but he also, he can make some pretty brutal mistakes. And I think we, we saw that in the playoffs last year that, he, you know, he wasn't exactly the the guy that you were hoping that he was going to be, uh, but I do think it's, see if if I have to worry about something with Tampa Bay, to me, it's their defense because beyond Hedmonton, Hedmonton, <laughs> holy crap, <laughs> Hedman, we're, we're all going to play the Hedmonton uh, Oilers. If he goes to the Edmonton Oilers ever, it's going to be the best day. That ever. would be great. Uh, beyond Hedman and, and McDonough. There are, to me, a lot of question marks. Yes, Shattenkirk can be really good, but he can also be really bad. Yes, Zach Bogosian can throw a hit, but has the game kind of skated him by? And, and I mean, maybe it was the fact that he was in Buffalo, so he was already exposed <laughs> because of <laughs> the team around him. But, I mean, I just don't. Zach Bogosian, to me, is a, a, he was, what, a third overall, fourth overall pick? I mean, from from that standpoint, the guy's a bust to me. Yeah, he's played a long time, but he ended up basically being a, a number four, forty-four games, a number four, number five defenseman uh, outside of a few years of his career. Uh, and Sergachev, I mean, can he can he avoid the the mistakes? Can it like that 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 to me is the question. I mean, his he isn't the largest player out there. Uh, I mean, I guess for a defenseman, he's he's decent size, but he's uh, not always the guy that I'm looking to to make the big play, and that worries me for Tampa. If they lose again here in the first round, in this preliminary round, let's or I guess they they can't, sorry they can't lose in the preliminary round. They lose in the first round. I I don't know what this team does. Like this is an absolute must win. You have to go to the conference finals at least. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. If they don't go to the conference finals, and especially because there's going to be reseeding, right? So you don't have to yeah. face Boston. You right. probably don't have to face Washington in those first couple rounds. So you might have to play Toronto. Right. <laughs> you might have to. You might have. You know, there's yeah. there's going to be some good teams that that end up, and and now you can immediately play a team outside your division. I mean, granted, they're likely not going to end up playing like the Pittsburgh Penguins or something, but 
you might see a pretty decent team. Yeah, I mean, but there's still an opportunity for you. It's more in your favor to go deeper. And so again, I, I think for the you know for the Lightning, the expectations, their window, they have to at least get to the conference finals. If not, you have to start seriously considering, you know, blowing up this team a little bit, and not necessarily like catastrophically blowing it up, but maybe you know move a couple guys like an Alex Kalorn, a Tyler Johnson, Yanni Gord, Al, you know Andre Palat. Maybe consider moving some of these guys and you know bringing in some younger pieces. Or you I mean, know, most of their defense is not signed after this year, right? I mean, Sergeyev is a, is an RFA, but to me, that's where you have to look to start improving is to take some load off of Hedman and and have a better top four and right now they have like a they have a solid mcdonough and headman but outside of that i really i I look at it and i go i mean this is like a ragtag bunch of guys head or shattenkirk and sergachev and coburn they could have a great playoff and i we could look back and this is the best defense core in these playoffs we could also look back and go it's why tampa bay lost in the first round again sure Okay, the Boston Bruins. Oh, uh, do you, wh- how far do you think Tampa? I don't know. We'll talk about that at the end. Okay, how far do we think they're going to go? <laughs> also, you're giving your uh, your right now Cup winner. If, oh, if you remember, we, we I talked do remember, about this. Yes. So you got to give your top t- the team you think is going to finish in the East and the West, and then the winner of that. I do so, remember? So just be uh, be prepared for that. We'll go the Boston Bruins, the team that finished tops in the Atlantic Division, and uh, the Boston Bruins really early on seemed to have no weakness <laughs> they could not be beat for uh, for quite some time uh kind of came back down to life a little bit as the you know as we, maybe the last month six weeks of what ended up being the final of the regular season but uh the bruins really probably for for my money are the best team in the Eastern Conference, not just because of their points. I mean, I, I think top to bottom, they they just have so much. Uh, let's start with the goaltending. Yeah, again, we talked about it, right? Razor they already won thin. a trophy. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. Uh, razor thin in terms of, like, I mean, you talk about Vasilevsky, right? Tuka Rask, he's another goaltender who's who could steal a series for you. He's He had the great regular season. He's going to be up for a Vesna. To me, he's in my top three for that category right now. Um do I think he wins it? No, I still give it to Connor Hollebuck, but we've already talked about that. Uh, you know, again, you know what you're getting out of this guy. He's going to give you quality games. You know, again, we we know what happened in Game 7 last year. We know that mantra that's kind of followed him around. So maybe this is an opportunity for him to really put that to rest. Maybe he's just going to say, hey, you know what? Screw that. You know, I blew it last year, but I'm not blowing it again. Maybe he goes on a tear. You know, this is a guy who could who could really light it up and just destroy some some scores confidence yeah really quick yeah yeah i mean in terms of goals saved above average he led the league 22.5 disgusting goals above average the only other guy close to him was connor hellebuck at 22.4 the next closest kidobin at 17 so it, it was he i mean you think you think five and a half goals more than the next or five about five goals more, uh allowed less than the next guy that he was responsible for I mean that's f- basically five wins. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, that's that's four or five extra wins that he brings in, and you know, there's your difference. That's why the Bruins are first and the Tampa Bay Lightning are second in the division. It, which ironically, it really doesn't matter at all now. Like it just matters that you're in the top four, and that now it's all going to kind of get scrambled up. That is the one thing that I don't like about the the reseeding is that. Yeah, you made it into the top four, but it literally meant nothing that you were above. Like, it doesn't mean anything that the Bruins were above the the Lightning. Right. Absolutely. President's Trophy, who cares? Yeah. President's Trophy doesn't give you any advantage at this point. Uh, So, in in that sense, it's a little sad. But, um, yeah, obviously goaltending, they're they're in capable hands. And if anything happens to Rask, Yaroslav Halak has songs written after him after uh, 2009. Yeah, so. thanks, thanks Montreal. There was this. Uh, I think I've talked about it on the show before. Probably like probably years ago, I talked about it. There was this st- song uh, off of uh, the Lady Gaga song, and it was Yaroslav Halak. You oh bring my the Stanley gosh. Cup. <laughs> 
I think you played that for me one I, time. I think and, I did. Uh, yeah, you can you can go look that up, and I'm sure if you you go on YouTube and search Yaroslav Halak song, it'll be up there. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're in decent hands. Definitely one of the better backups uh, out of these these four teams. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, that defense. Once again, going to a very strong a position of strength here for the Boston Bruins. And you talked about it with the Lightning and all these guys with that are looking for contracts. Holy mackerel. Here is a chance for Tory Krug to become one of the highest paid defensemen in the league, potentially. I mean, he might get more than John Carlson got or right around what John Carlson received. Yeah, I think the only thing that really might stand in his way for some teams is his size, right? He's five foot nine. And new NHL, right? Size isn't supposed to matter as much, you know, because this guy's a righty. He's got speed. He can move the puck. He quarterbacks a power play very, very well. So some teams are going to probably be willing to give him that money, but I think some teams might shy away from him. Regardless, when you are one of the top scorers in the NHL in terms of points and even points per games for that matter uh, on the back end and D and he's only 28 right now so he's still 29 now yeah 29 now so he's still got some good years we unfortunately left had some birthdays since we right. last played That's... <laughs> I mean he's still got if you're a team you're more than willing to hand him a four or five year deal without question oh well yeah I mean you're gonna have to give him seven I don't think there's any think doubt so? about it he's getting seven years no doubt yeah. He's he's the best defenseman in this you in this free agency. Oh, I I, I don't agree with that. I, I think Peter Angelo. I don't think he'll make it to. to you don't agency. think so? No. Okay. Well, then if that's the case, then yes, he will I'll, be the I'll best. I'll say this: he will be the. Uh, he is guaranteed to, to potentially be the best. I'll tell you what: Angelo may or may not sign in St. Louis. Krug is not going to sign in Boston. No, I absolutely there, agree like with that. there's. You you look at you know I'm trying to figure out a way to make it happen. The only way to do it is if you trade Krejci. If you can, and now he would only have one year left on his deal. It's possible. I mean, he does have a no trade clause. Uh, he has to list at least fifty percent of the teams in the NHL who he would take a trade to. Yeah, but that makes it tough. That would be the only way. Like to me, when I look at the Bruins, you know, if we're thinking long term, that's probably the move you have to make. You have to find a way to trade David Krejci, <laughs> which which at seven point two, if you could, you know, if you can eat two million of that, you get that extra five million, and you could sign Tory Krug. Yeah, because I think Tory Krug's going to be an easy seven eight million dollar guy. Easy. So, yeah, that would help. And even if you have to eat a little bit of yeah Krejci's contract, right? That would that would help. But I mean, it's funny. I I look at the Red Wings, right? Tory Krug's from Michigan. That would be great for them. And I mean, they could hand they him got over cat money. They can. I mean, as Steve Eiserman, though, would he be willing to hand Tory Krug $9 million? To I don't come think to he Detroit? would. No. Probably not. But regardless, I think. Eight maybe, though. Yeah. Tory Krug's definitely going to be one of the top UFAs to hit the market this year. All now, the more reason for him to, like, this right. is it with the Bruins. Like, you've been here your whole career. Here you go. One last chance to win it with this team. And it's going to be tough to beat this team. And already. speaking of one last chance, Big Z, right? 43. Can he still go? I mean, obviously, the rest is going to be more than helpful for him. He's, like, more healthy than most of the guys. I know he is. I mean, yeah, 43, this rest is going to be great for him. So it'll be great to see a fresh Chara in the playoffs, even at 43 years old. If he comes back fresh and, like, ready to roll, I mean, the the Bruins... Makes him more dangerous. If you can can kick the clock back five years and you get a 38-year-old Chara, which is... Crazy to say that we would take a 38 year old <laughs> hockey player, uh, but he would. The Bruins might might be the Cup favorites if he is that good. Yeah, if he's as good as he was in like 2015 or 14 or something like that, because he's so rested. And Boston's Watch got out. a system in place for their defense, the way their team plays, where it just makes it easier for their defensemen to look good. And, I mean, not necessarily just look good because they're playing so well, but look good because they can be better players the way their system is set up for them, right? You don't have to consistently chase guys. You don't have to worry about, you know, letting in guys behind you up front, right? Their forwards play responsible hockey. They don't give the puck up a lot. So this is all an advantage to the Boston D, which is already pretty dang good. Yeah. Uh, offensively speaking, from a, from a forward standpoint, we know this team is going to come at you with a strong dose of Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marchand. Uh, Charlie Coyle was phenomenal in the playoffs last year. 
Uh, I don't think that they go. I don't think they get past the first round against the Leafs if it's not for Charlie Coyle. I absolutely agree. Yeah, and of course you need him to be that guy again because he is your maybe he's your your second line center at this point. Uh, they they what they brought in Kasha at the deadline from Tampa or from uh, Anaheim. Sorry. I mean, he really was your your big your big pickup there. You need Kasha to be that guy. I mean, towards the towards the stretch, he only played six games for Boston. He had one assist. Uh, before that, forty nine games, he had twenty three points. I mean, he he's been not the greatest. I mean, you know, since he had 30, 20 goals in twenty seventeen eighteen, he's scored eight, uh, eighteen goals since then. He hasn't been healthy. And maybe this is his chance. Like maybe this is where Kasha gets healthy. He's able to squeeze himself up into the top six, and Boston's got a legitimate some depth to that forward position. Along with you know, of course, you've got David Krejci, but we don't know. I always just I always wonder about Krejci. Like you just never know what kind of Krejci you're going to get <laughs> at, at this point. I mean, seventy three points last year, only forty three this year, forty four the year before. Like. Are you going to get the Krejci who is a twenty goal scorer and a fifty assist guy, or are you going to get the the guy who's, you know, I, I guess it, over the course of eighty two games he probably would have had fifty five points this year, but which guy are you going to get? Does this rest help him? Because like this this team maybe more than any other team in the Eastern Conference in terms of like the age. Yeah, I you know what I, this rest could really help the Bruins. I honestly though feel bad for Krejci because he's a guy who doesn't have consistent wingers, right? And he's still expected to produce because of the size of that contract. So, you know, hey, maybe now you know you got Kasha, Nick, Nick Ricci out there. Are these guys gonna, you know, they've got one year left on their deals too after this season? So maybe both these guys acquired at the deadline could provide a little spark for Krejci. Yeah, you know, yep. and it gives you the opportunity to put. Coil on a third line now, maybe more of a defensive role. Open him up with a guy like Jake DeBrusque, who can you know still put the puck in the net a little bit. And which, maybe, which I think to me, I think your ideal spot is Krejci is your third line center. Coil comes in and is your second line center. I think ideally that would be better, but again, Coil's got to show up again. If he you know, but that's the nice. That's also the nice thing too. If Coil shows up as your second line guy and maybe isn't like producing, top, you've got a good top nine. Yeah, is your, absolutely. But yeah, so, I mean Coil. 37 points in these 70 games. But, I mean, last year in the playoffs, in 24 games, he had nine goals. Like, if you can get that kind of production out of him again, you are going to be in a good place. Uh, Whether or not he can produce that way, we'll have to see. We'll see. All right, let's go to the Washington Capitals, the top team in the Metropolitan Division with 90 points. And, uh, yeah, this, this Washington team, once again, from a goaltending, this is probably out of these four teams the one team that we look at the goaltending situation and go, all right, who's going to start? That's a very good question. Yeah, I'm I'm worried. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I I think Braden Holpe is probably the guy you're going to go to because he has the experience. He's got the, the ring. But, again, you talk about the numbers, right? I mean, regular season-wise, Sam Sonoff had the better, the better stats. He only played in about half the games. Obviously, forty-eight for Holpe, twenty-six for Samsonov. But you know, Holpe's numbers: eight nine seven save percentage, three point one one goals against average. And when you look at goals average, goals saved above average, he is the worst yeah, in the league outside of Jimmy Howard. Point seven six under, you know, in the negative. So yeah, he had he had a terrible season. I mean, yeah. he still managed twenty-five fourteen and six record. He was he was okay, but. I mean, Samsonov is sixteen and six, two three yeah, or two point three goals saved above average, so much better. Uh, I think def- defensively speaking, the Capitals they had some injuries. Radko Gudis coming in over, uh, oh my gosh, who did they trade to the Flyers? Uh, Niskanen. Niskanen. I think that that their defense took a little bit of a step back because of that move. I, I don't think that Washington has quite the mobility on their back end that they used to. And and really, it, it is their their weaker area if we're going to find one for the Washington Capitals. Yeah, uh, I, I do and think, it, and it probably pays off to have that younger, more mobile goaltender over a Holtby who is. I mean, Holtby's played a lot of games. 
Well, let's face it. Holpe is playing for a contract, right? Because I don't think he's going to re-sign in Washington. I think that was already you know made clear when uh, they went out and signed Nicholas Backstrom to an extension at a. I mean, to me, a little. I think they overpaid a little bit at nine point two million dollars. Um, but again, you you've locked in your number one and number two center now of your Washington. So that's kind of a little security blanket there with him and Kuzi. But Holpe isn't going to re-sign. I don't think there's any way Washington can find a way to to get him and this team under the cap. And when you've got a guy like Sam Sonoff, who you know is going to be your guy of the future, so let Holpe walk, save the money, yeah. which give him the reins. In that case, are you not looking at this and going, I mean, sorry, but you're not our goalie anymore. Sam Sonoff is well, going to be our goaltender. What I'm going to do in these three, however many games they play in this little play in Of match, course. I'm rotating, guys. I'm going to yep. see who wants it more. You know, training camp, I'm going to see who's who's more prepared, who's – you know who's going to battle for me a little bit more, and if maybe Holpe, you know, is right there with Sam Sonoff, I'm going to give Holpe the edge just because he has the playoff experience and has the cup. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the last time the the Capitals decided to uh, to give the reins to someone else, Holpe came in after two games and won them the cup. So <laughs> maybe the strategy is to give Sam Sonoff, and if he struggles, Holpe will come in and they'll win the cup. <laughs> Don't know if that will work out twice, but no. Yeah, de- defensively speaking, outside of John Carlson, it, Orlov is a fine stay-at-home guy. He's a good partner for for uh, John Carlson. Radko Gudis, we know, like there, there is always a chance that Radko Gudis is not going to play in the next game, not because he's going to get hurt, but because he's going to do something stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Michael Kempney has, you know, he's he's fine on that four-five kind of kind of slot. Nick Jensen, another guy who's just fine. I think bringing in Brendan Dillon from the from the San Jose Sharks, that was a a solid move. I hope it works out because I hope ten it works games, out, yeah. no points. So I'm hoping that maybe this rest, this pause, kind of helps them reset things a little bit. You know, because I mean, when he's you're not a big point guy anyway. No, he? fourteen but, only had one. He's had one goal each of the last two years, right? But he didn't look like his normal his normal self. He didn't look like that guy. And I think maybe when you're playing on you know a bad team in San Jose that's losing a lot of games, it kind of brings you down a little bit. And I think when you get moved, minute. yeah, you still need to adjust. You're you're learning a new system because let's face it, San Jose and Washington don't play the same style of game. And so I think for me, this pause might actually do him some good. So he'll be great, I think, in that second spot in terms of that second pairing. Um, I think he'll look really, really good. Now you can throw him with, I think, just about anybody, whether that's Nick Jensen or Lof Kempney. I think one of those guys, you'll just throw them together. I think Brendan Dillon, he'll be fine. He'll be fine there. Is there anybody who is going to benefit more from this little break than Alexander Ovechkin? Nobody. Guys played a lot of games. Heart and soul guy. Like he doesn't miss games really. He rarely misses a game. In the last time he uh he played fewer than seventy five games in a regular season outside of a lockout year. Uh two thousand nine ten. And that's like the fewest games he's ever played. <laughs> seventy two games. I mean that's that's a lot of games over the course of your career. And I mean the guy scored obviously is over seven hundred goals. Uh, he's had 65 goals in the playoffs. This is an opportunity for Ovechkin. Like this team, you look at their makeup, you go, Ovechkin's 34, Backstrom's 32. Now Backstrom just got a fatty contract, but you're kind of paying him for what he did, not necessarily for him. He, I what don't he's think gonna he's going to put up 92 points or anything. Uh, TJ Oshie's 33, and Oshie's a guy who definitely relies on his ability to grind and kind of get in your face and and sneak around. Uh, This core team is getting older. What an opportunity for the Capitals. They get to rest. They get to watch these other teams beat up each other. They're going to get the, what, the second worst. Well, no, you have a chance to get the worst team coming out, depending on what happens here uh, in the first round. And the sleeper. You've got Ilya Kovalchuk. That to me is the biggest wild card right there, and that is a whoa, man! What a what a little like interesting, almost like oh yeah, they they got Ilya Kovalchuk. I, f- I forgot about that. You right. know? I saw some video of him doing a little bit of boxing right now in this this break. He looks like a beast right now. He looks like he's ready to fly, it, and he he came out excited when he got traded to Washington. I mean, you can put him on a second or third line, and I think he's going to produce a lot for you. And he's if you produce get him well. on the power play and you put him in the, like. That power play already has Ovechkin that everyone is looking to. 
And now if you can use Ilya Kovalchuk, who has some pretty magic hands in front of the net uh, and, a, and a great shot in tight. This this team, to me, is, even though they finished top in their division, I think we kind of like, oh, yeah, the Capitals. They won their cup. Like, they already won their cup. And in a way, we write them off. Like, uh, are they the favorites to win the cup? No. But they maybe they should be. Yeah, and don't rest on a guy like Jacob Verana, too, who's who's absolutely. exploded 25 goals. I mean, talk about some depth at scoring. They're going to have a lot of pieces up front, much like the Tampa Bay Lightning you know, again, question marks on defense. The, the defense is... The goaltending, yeah. maybe a little bit, you know, less reliable if you're but, Washington, but still. You are absolutely right about the contract. It's either And it's either the contract or playing for your net. Both things that, that should uh, should motivate those goaltenders. All right, let's go to the final team uh, that we have in the top four in the Eastern Conference. And that is the Philadelphia Flyers sneaking into the top two of the division for the first time in a while here and uh this team i i don't think we expected them to do this well this soon but they do really have a nice mix of veterans young players coming through players that have like ivan provrov and thomas konechny these guys that have seasoned themselves they've been given the opportunity to kind of drudge through some of the rough seasons with the Philadelphia Flyers along with of course your longtime Claude Giroux Jack, Jacob Voracek Sean Couturier like these guys who have been here for a little bit a little bit of time this this team really has a beautiful mix of veterans and younger players guys who have been there before guys who haven't I I'm I actually don't know what to think of this team being this high up like, this is probably the one team that I I feel like I know least about. Like I I'm I have the most question marks uh, because I guess maybe I just didn't expect them to be in this position. Yeah, I mean, talk about a change in the off season, right? You you bring in a new GM, a new head coach, Elaine Vigneault. I think the system he's put in place has been great. Uh, doesn't also hurt that now you finally have what hopes to be some stability in goal, right? A, a goaltender back there, even though he's young, you know. Mr. Hart, Carter Hart back there in that, you know, he could be a wild card for Philly because again, I don't I'm with you too. I really don't know what to make of this team or what kind of team I'm going to get because they started the season a little slow and maybe that's because of all the changes and then they turned it on and they they were hot end of the year and so again, you got to kind of throw out those streaks out the window at, you know, with this pause, but they could still come in and play hot because now they've adapted to this new system. Maybe that was, you know, what was really holding them back, you know. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, they're also going to get... They had some players that were hurt towards the end of the regular season. Uh, Van Riemsdyk was hurt a little bit. Long-term injury. You had Nolan Patrick, Oscar Lindblom, Samuel Morin. Uh, I want, like, I think we've all been waiting for Nolan Patrick to break out and, and have some kind of semblance of, like, okay, this is why the Flyers took him at number two. Uh, his best season... This year, 31 points in 72 games, 13 goals, his career high. Like He's kind of been a an average third line, kind of sneaks into the top six. And I really want to see Nolan Patrick break out in, in these playoffs. I would love to see that. Is he going to be healthy, though, to play? I don't know. That's the big question. I, I'm not really sure about his injury status right now. Um, I guess my my assumption is always that well, if you were if you were hurt before, <laughs> you should probably be able to play now. But I mean, they would love it. That would that would add some depth. They could you know that third line center position would be great for a guy like that to come in. Uh, then they don't have to play a guy like Derek Grant, who you know he's he's been fine, but you know ideally Nolan Patrick would be the guy you want there. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, they they still haven't really come out and. I can't find anything about what's going on with him. So okay, I mean, let's if, let's, you, if you know, hit us on Twitter. Right. So the assumption for me is he's not going to be in there. But regardless, I think you still have an amazing top line. You know, whether or not you're rolling, you know, Couturier with Giroux, but the other, you know, whether or not you have Konechny or Voracek up there on that right side, doesn't matter. I think that top line's still going to be dangerous. Kevin Hayes looked pretty good. 
Um, seven million dollar man, Kevin Hayes. Yeah, maybe would still wouldn't have given him that seven point one four two eight five seven million dollar man. But getting JVR back healthy, that's going to be a big boost come yep. playoff time. Yep. He plays hard. He has good hands. He'll be fun to watch. Just toss him in front of the net, and he will do some magical things on yes. the power play. And you've witnessed it for quite a while. That's right. Uh, and and defensively, you know this this team really has a lot of really nice young defensemen. Uh, and then you throw in a veteran like Matt Niskanen, who's won a Stanley. Won, has he won two Stanley Cups? With Pittsburgh. He won a Stanley Cup with Pittsburgh, too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, Niskanen is a guy who has tons of playoff experience. Uh, you know, Goss Despair has been there before. Some of these, these guys have been there, but they haven't exactly had the the runs that a guy like Niskanen that you can. Goss has got to be. Yeah, draw he's, he's got to be a guy to me that's got to step up if Philly wants to have any long-term success in the playoffs because we know what we're going to get you know Ivan Provorov he's going to be a quality defenseman but he doesn't have that offensive upside that I think a guy like Gustav Sphere does same with Niskanen right he can still provide some decent minutes for you but he's not going to put up those 40 50 points on the back end like Shane Gustav Sphere can and that's why they paid him so yeah I mean 65 points in 2017 18 and since then he's had you know 49 points in 128. Yeah. So. so which one are you getting? And if you get the guy that can be what you thought he would be when you signed him to an extension and you know drafted him for, I mean, shoot, then this team could be really dangerous. I'll never forget in the playoffs when the Capitals and the Flyers are playing each other. I think the Capitals won in like five or six games, but Gostas Bear, when the puck was getting cleared out of the zone on a power play. He dove and knocked the puck down with his hand and then landed on the ice and stood back up and made a play. I remember that, yeah. I remember being like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, the most athletic defenseman. And yeah, he just he had a great season and, and just kind of fell off the map a little bit. And, and, you know, you never know. You never know what a guy kind of maybe is going through mentally, physically, and it's always possible that this whole ordeal becomes something good for some of these guys. They get a chance to rest. They get a chance to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their career. And uh, he's certainly one of those guys, you're right, that if he can get back to that point, the Flyers' defense goes from being a really nice defense to, holy crap, you have a whole other player that you have to watch out for all the time. Yeah, you've got a solid top four then at that point. And Ivan Provorov is phenomenal. Yeah, he's good. Uh, Anyone that you're looking at at the forward position you know, of course, we know Drew. We know Voracek. Like, is there anybody in there that you're going? I, I'd keep an eye on this guy. Oh yeah, I obviously, I think to me it's it's got to be JVR to me because I think we know what we're getting out of their top line. I think when you start playing some of these more top tier teams like Washington, and Tampa Bay that have firepower in their top nine, you need that depth scoring. And I think that's kind of part of the reason they brought him in here. One, because he brings the physicality to the game. But two, he has the hands and he can score. So Yeah, he can definitely score some goals. Yeah. So to me, I think obviously 66 games, 40 points, not a bad you know season. He'll be healthy, ready to go. And especially for a bigger guy like that who likes to throw the body around, that's great. To me, he's the guy that's got to do it for this team. Because, you know, you if you got to go line for line, you know, when you look down the, like I said, those top teams like Washington and Tampa – they're going to have the depth to do it. Philly's going to need it. If if we're talking most underrated players in the NHL, and you know Barkov was always the name thrown around, but you can't win that four years in a row and still be the most underrated. Player. Right. I actually think Sean Couturier is probably the most underrated player in the NHL. I absolutely agree. He's phenomenal. I mean he he would have put up another he he would have put up seventy points likely at, or around seventy points had the season played out. Uh, he had ended up with 59 points in 69 games. He had 76 points both the last two years. Uh, maybe a little bit of a down year but uh, from the previous two in terms of production. But obviously the team success, much more important anyways. This team is deeper. They didn't need to rely on him the same way. So you're, you're okay with taking a little hit to your stats if your team's winning. Uh, but Sean Couturier to me is like he is the straw that stirs this drink. Right. Last time in the playoffs, five games for Philly in 17-18, uh, nine points. Yeah, I remember. Yes, talk about a straw. Yeah, yeah. And I and that I think that was when that was against the Capitals mm-hmm. in that series. So I and it, it, the the cool storyline could be the Flyers. They might end up playing the Maple Leafs. 
who you know that, that would nice be fun JVR little uh, little connection there and oh just gonna be so fun when are we starting <laughs> when do we get going all right I want to hear your predictions for the East uh, it doesn't ha- I mean obviously it doesn't have to be one of these four teams it can be any team you want uh, and then I want to hear your West and then who wins the cup Ooh, okay Oh, man, this one was tough. Um, East was a lot harder for me to decide on than the West was, I'll be honest, because there's just there's so many teams and so many wild cards on each team that really just uh, get it. Uh-huh. I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> ultimately, though, I honestly had to go with Tampa Bay for the East. I think okay. just because of the pressure on them to win, they have to do it, I think, or else you're blowing up this team, in my opinion. They've got the goaltending. They've got the forwards, and I think... You know, the question marks may be on defense. I think they're not worrying me enough. They, I'm not worried enough about it to really say, okay, that's going to hold them back because they've got enough to, to make up the difference if the defense sort of falters outside of McDonough and Hedman. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to go down. Please. The Toronto Maple Leafs will somehow end up playing the Boston Bruins again. Probably. And this time they will finally slay the beast. The Maple Leafs will beat the Boston Bruins. I, if it plays out, this is how I'm playing it out: is that the the Bruins, where they end up falling because because the Leafs are their eighth, and I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to go through, and I, uh, six is Carolina, right? I think that's how I, yeah, yeah, six is Carolina. I think they're going to go through. Uh, I think there's a chance that, based on that those standings, if the Bruins finish high enough, that the Leafs could be one of the lower seeds that actually make it through. Probably the third highest seed that make it through. And and I'm thinking the Bruins finish three. And so the Leafs play the Bruins in the in the first round. They're going to move through them, and they're going to have to at some point they're going to play the Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't know how Pittsburgh Penguins, Toronto Maple Leafs are going to play for the Eastern Conference. And the Leafs are going to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins and move to their first Stanley Cup Finals wow. since 1967. Now, uh, and the reason that will happen is because this year people will go, oh, well, see, yeah, this is their first final since 67, but it's not really that legit. So it'll be it'll be like this small <laughs> rub. Really still legit. doesn't really count that much. Uh, <laughs> in the Western Conference, I think that speed is going to be so, is so important. And the two teams with the most speed, in my mind, are the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche. I think this is the Edmonton Oilers coming out party. And I think the two teams that are hub cities are going to be in the Stanley Cup. Wow. <laughs> That's Edmonton bold. Oilers, Toronto Maple Leafs. And then they're going to have to go, where are we going to play the finals? Which one? Which one gets it? Yeah, they have talked about at that point. Depending on where things are, they might actually let the teams like play at their hometown. I think that those ones they would, you know, yeah, travel back and forth. Yeah. maybe. Yeah, wow, that would be crazy. Um, to me, in the West, though, I, I agree with you. I think speed is going to kill, but I think, <sighs> boy, you know what? My my heart wants to say St. Louis again, just because I loved everything I saw last year out of this team. I love the story, the resilience. I love a lot of the guys on that team and the grit they kind of bring. And but to me, I think ultimately speed kills, and I think they've got enough firepower up front to just duke it out with some of these teams if they've got to go toe for toe toe in terms of goals. To me, Colorado's going to win the West. I think they're just too powerful. Okay, uh, they've got yeah. now a, a cadre. To center that second line, who I Boy, think wouldn't that be a Leafs Colorado? Oh, that'd be you got fun. Kadri going at it with the with the Leafs, that yeah. would be, and then he gets suspended. Oh, he might not even play; he might get suspended. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, and then I'm I'm sure then that means your prediction for the Cup is probably going to be Toronto. Yeah, I, I yeah I'm saying Toronto will win their first Stanley Cup since 1967 and okay. be told that it's not legitimate. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. Right. That is like a Toronto thing. Yeah. That's what'll happen. Okay. I'm Just gonna, like the Raptors win it, and they're like, well, you only won it because uh, Cowie right. came and Kawhi Leonard came in. And, and then he left. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. The Leafs pick, and the Avs were one and one against each other, by the way. Okay. So wow. in case that would be interesting. Um, I'm going to pick Tampa Bay to win. Okay. Yeah, I think it's their year finally. They had Tampa, a, Colorado would be a good They're final. going to learn from their mistakes last year. So, okay. At least come playoffs. I like it. All right. So, you're picking the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm picking the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Stanley Cup finals because why not? Why not? This is the year to just 
I'm going to stick with my homer team. If I got to take a wild card, though, I, I just want to throw this out there. I think there's maybe a wild card team, uh, you know, in terms of both conferences that I think could really do some damage if, if a couple guys show up. But I think Carolina was, is going to be fun to watch for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I have to pick a team who is like far down the standings, a team that is that doesn't have home ice advantage, you know, quote unquote home ice advantage. Right. Uh, somebody who is ranked nine through 12. A team that I think could surprise. Uh, man, I guess I'd have to go Vancouver Canucks. Okay, I think that they could. I could see they it. could surprise some people. Uh, that and Columbus is is better than they than they look. So that I mean, my whole prediction could be completely out the. Hey, Torch is known to squeeze the most out of his guys, and now he's got an extra hey, three months to do it. The Leafs are either <laughs> the Leafs are either going to win the cup or the first overall pick. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to say it's not legit. No I'm matter be which way it is. If Toronto wins no the first overall pick, is. <laughs> that is what'll happen. All right. Well, this has been Overtime Hockey Talk. Let us know what you thought. Uh, subscribe, share with your friends. That's all we want. Just share it with your friends. Let them know that you love our show. Give us a five star rating. And uh, you can always follow us on Twitter. And uh, that's at, at OT Hockey Talk. Justin, any final thoughts? Toronto better not win anything. <laughs> Nothing. I don't want you rubbing that in my face for the next couple months. You won so many Stanley Cups, it's not even fair. Okay, we'll talk to you.